Hey everyone, welcome back to Ontario Gardening. So today I am going to just quickly go over my 2023 garden plans. I am super, super excited to show you those this year. Um, I feel like I have maximized my space in a way that I have never done before. I have literally tried to use every little square inch to my advantage. And I, of course, have my three felt bags that I keep off to the side. If you're a long time viewer, you know that I have experimental felt bags for those crops that I've never tried to grow before or that I am interested in growing but don't want to waste the garden space in case I don't like it. And I have three different things that I'm super excited to try. So flipping over and I have showed you this book before. It's about $8 on Amazon. Um, every year I plan my garden and I map things out. So up in the corner here um, is my pollinator garden. And if you've gone on a garden tour with me before, you know that like this is my fence line. I'm in a smaller suburban backyard um, and I try to, to utilize my space in my lawn. Um, I have a pool and such off to the side. So I didn't want to waste it with garden beds that were like in the middle of the lawn. So I do them in an L shape along the fence. So in the corner, I have my pollinator garden. I have blueberry bushes that I actually planted last spring. I'm hoping that they come back this year and everything's well, and maybe we'll see little blueberries this year. I'm going to try some calendula. I did grow calendula last year and showed you how to save the seeds in a previous video. Um, but this year I'm actually going to grow it on a bigger scale so I can use it to make oil and make things like creams, tinctures, um, and different things for the body. Um, and I'm really excited for that. Chamomile. Um, I wasn't so successful growing chamomile in containers last year, so I'm going to put it right in the pollinator garden and make sure that I'm harvesting tons of that for, um, for my tea because I'm just super excited to do that. I also think I'm going to try um, making my own oil with that as well. I'm growing some Cosmos. I'm not a huge fan of the look of Cosmos, but I actually seen hummingbirds in my garden for the first time last year and they were all coming to Cosmo. So I'm going to plant a few of those just because I really want to see those again this year. Um, and lavender. Lavender obviously has so many uses and it's a great pollinator. So I'm going to try and see. I did plant two plants in there last year, but I think it got shaded out and they didn't survive because when I was digging out my Cosmos and my Dahlias and my Zinnias, it didn't look like they were there anymore. So next door, I have three different rows of squashes. I have a green zucchini. I always grow um, Black Beauty now after a recommendation from a friend. I loved the variety. Going to be growing Black Beauty zucchini. Um, next door, I've got a yellow zucchini. So this one is a gold. It's called Golden Zucchini. And I believe it's from MI Gardener. So I'm going to grow a yellow zucchini because I've only ever grown green before and apparently yellow is sweeter. It's better for like your baked goods and your breads and your noodles. So I'm excited to try that. And next door, I have a patty pan squash. If you know what that is, they are delicious grilled. Just cutting them in half and grilling them. I love them. Skin and all. So I'm doing it that, that this year. Now here in my, sorry, I don't want to shake the camera too much. Here in the tomato bed. So last year I grew my tomatoes because I have trellises and I have grew them this way on the trellises. This year I'm actually going to grow them along the back of the fence on the trellises, almost like they're growing on the fence to utilize that space so I can grow things in front of them. So instead of wasting the entire bed on tomatoes, I'm going to grow them this way and then have smaller plants that won't shade them out or that the tomatoes won't take over in front. So I'm going to do beans and I'm doing three different types of beans this, this year. I'm going to do my Lewis green bean, which I always do. They're like a really skinny stringless bean that we love. And then next door, I'm going to try the Blue Lake Bush Bean. I've heard really good things about that one. Um, that one you can get at Baker Creek or at my gardener. Actually, lots of places sell that one. And then next door to that, um, the third bush, and they're all going to be bushes, no vines, so that they are nice and compact and don't waste a lot of space, is the Golden Wax. I have only ever grown yellow beans once. They were on a vine. It was a nightmare, and I hated it. In the corner up here, I am going to do an arch trellis. I am hoping to have 
Loofah grow up one side of the trellis and honey nut squash, which is a smaller version of a butternut squash, a more personalized version, up the other side. Now, word on the street is I have never grown either of these. And word on the street is this loofah is going to overtake everything. Is it possible? Probably. And if I lose out on the honey nut squash, that's okay. No problems. I'll still be happy that I got some loofah because I'm really excited to try things with that loofah. Dish cloths, um, obviously shower sponges, that sort of thing. Underneath the arch trellis, I still wanted to get something because we have the sun that usually comes in through this way. So I'm going to put in some sugar peas underneath there. Um, I've said in the past I would never grow peas again. Um, I will never grow shelling peas again. And the reason for that is because you, I just find it's just a waste of space for like 10, if you're lucky, 10 little peas in a pod and it just wasn't worth it for me. But the sugar peas, you get to eat the um, pea whole. So you can put them in stir fries. You can literally just snack on them, roast them. So many different things that you can do with them. So I am going to grow those there and hopefully they work. Next door, I am going to do okra again. I loved okra last year. I have got some heavy hitter okra on the way. Apparently they actually produce like way more than your regular clemless spineless. So I'm excited for those. I'm going to do a couple rows of radish. I'm going to keep going all summer currently like turn because radishes ever are usually every 21 days so I've got a couple different varieties of those I'm going to try watermelon radish this year uh, I always grow french breakfast and the um cherry bell I believe it is those ones are all great and I get a succession plant over and over and over again all summer and continue to get I'll probably have to throw some uh, shade cloth over there just to continue to get that radish I'm going to do two cucumber plants we found that was more than enough last year because we grow a, a variety called silver slicer and they produce like mad um honestly we were getting like five cucumbers a day off these plants between the two that we did last year and it was more than enough we have cucumbers still in the freezer just coming out of the wazoo here we have peppers we're doing an entire bed of peppers um, I haven't narrowed down exactly what I'm doing yet I do know for sure that I have I have a hot mix which uh, consists of a different a couple different kinds um, Anaheim um, habanero um, I can't remember uh, cayenne I believe but anyways there's a couple different peppers in that hot mix that I'm gonna plant in a row because I want to do um, pepper rings this year and you'll see um, at the end of this week I believe I'm going to be doing a canning or a canning plans for the year of course I do canning tutorials and preserve how to preserve our food and I really want to try hot pepper rings this year so we're going to do a hot mix I believe I'm going to do um, just next door in the next line um, candy cane peppers um, I'm going to try I'm going to do three the three colors of bell peppers banana peppers not a pinos yolo wonders and lesia so that's what i've got so far if you have any pepper suggestions i have a ton of different kinds upstairs please feel free to comment and let me know what you think in the next bed over I, that's where i have the asparagus planted obviously asparagus doesn't move so as they come up i'll kind of see where they're at and i'm going to interplant green onions in between them um, just because green onion does not go like they do not have deep roots so I don't have to worry when I pull them at the end of the season that it's going to pull the asparagus with it it grows above ground it's not going to shade them out so I think that's a perfect um, a perfect thing to put in between I did so much celery last year that I don't have to do a ton of celery this year but I'm gonna grow just a line of celery and I'm doing pink celery this year so that's super exciting and then last but not least over in the beds themselves I'm doing carrots um, I have a, a ladder I don't know if you've ever seen these before it has four boxes you would see them in my garden tour before I'm gonna do a bunch of different um, herbs in those just because I want to let some of them go a seed, go to seed and show you how to save those seeds. Um, I do did write in here marigold. So right in this, the, I just did it on this bed, but I'm actually going to do it all the way across the front of all my beds. I'm planting little marigolds as trap crops to try and get the bugs to go from. So last year I did the marigolds this way. And it was silly because I wasn't really able to reach the back of the bed, the marigolds, to get the bugs. So if I put it, them all this way, they're right at the front of the beds. I'm hoping it works out the way I want it to, where all the bugs come to the front of the bed and then I can pick them off. So my three felt bags, 
my three experiments this year. So I don't grow them in the middle of the lawn. They're tucked off to the side. But I'm going to try Honey Rock Cantaloupe. That's what I'm going to be trying in the first one. I'm going to have to trellis it well, feed it well, but it can be done. I've seen it done and I want to try it myself. Um, ground cherry, if you know what that is. And then last but not least, kohlrabi. I would love to try it doing that. And then last but not least, um, I have hangers all over the yard. I'm going to grow strawberries in there. I always do. And I have like, um, similar to a green stock, but I have like those Dollar Tree towers. And I am going to be, I winter sowed, as you've seen in a previous video. So um, as long as those all work out, I'm going to be doing lettuce and spinach in the bottom two. And in the top two, I'm going to be doing different types of mints. I don't want to grow mint in the ground or in the garden. I hear it can be super invasive. I don't want it taking over everything in the future. So we're going to keep our mints contained to our um, tower. I love those for teas and all the different things. So I'm really excited for that. I don't think there's like, I do have flowers that I'm planning to do out front. I've got um, Cupid's dart. I'm going to do my snapdragons I do every year in honor of my grandma. I have black lily seeds I'm going to try this year and then different types of dahlias. So here is my garden plans. And again, I will link the video below that shows this garden planner. There's so much more to this garden planner than just being able to sketch out. But that's for a different video. You can watch that. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm so excited. I would love to see your plans. Take me if you are a YouTuber and you have any videos talking about your plans or let me know if there's anything cool that you're growing this year that you're really excited about. Maybe you're trying or if you're a new gardener, what you're most excited about. I, um, oh, I forgot to mention the tomatoes I'm doing. Not that it really matters, but I'm going to try brandy wine red this year because I've heard really good things. Um, and I doing cherry oaky purple. I wasn't able to get those to germinate last year. Fingers crossed I can this year. Paul Robeson I like. And then I'm going to try the sun gold cherry tomato. I have never really grown a cherry tomato except for red ones. So I'm going to try these yellow ones. Apparently they're super sweet. So we shall see. But thanks again for joining us. Join us in the next couple days when we talk about what we're going to be canning this season. We'll talk to you later. Bye.